Thank you. Good morning. Um, what I'd like to talk to you about today is, um, is the Alaska Range project that PolarX has been working on for about the last 12 months. Uh, before I do that, I'll just uh, refer you to the cautionary statements, the usual ones about forward-looking statements, etc. Um, so the Alaska Range project, we have about 240 square kilometres of state mining claims uh, that we own 100% outright of the, uh, the northeastern corner here. Um, and the right to earn 80 or 90 per cent of the, uh, the properties in the, the southwest. It's about 35 kilometres long. Uh, the soil sampling along almost the entire length of that project now. And you know, I just draw your uh, attention to the large soil anomaly in the, uh, the northern part of that project there. That soil anomaly at 250 parts per million copper is about 16 kilometres long and 7 kilometres wide. That's twice the size of the, uh, the island of Manhattan. So it's a, a truly enormous uh, copper anomaly. Within that, we have two jork resources. We have Caribou Dome, which is a, a small high-grade VMS deposit, just under 3 million tonnes at just over 3% copper. Um, certainly a lot of upside potential there, but geometrically quite complex. And then we have the, uh, the Zackley resource, which is about 3.5 million tonnes uh, at a, a copper equivalent grade of close to 2.7%, 2.8%. The Zackley is a scan. Uh, and in our view, the data that we've collected through drilling that we've done and reviewing the historical data uh, and the context of the project, uh, we believe exactly represents part of a much larger porphyry copper gold system, uh, and that will become increasingly the focus of our exploration. Just a little bit about um, the corporate side. Uh, it is a tightly held stock. Top 20 own about 70% of the company, top 40 about 81%. Major shareholders include the, uh, the management team at about 15%. Uh, Mill Rock Resources, who's a Canadian listed junior um, and, and project generator. Uh, they generated the, uh, the project to the north and then rolled that into equity in the company as part of a merger late last year. Um, and then we have strong institutional support out of London and Asia. So JP Morgan, that's the, uh, the full house account there. Uh, Rougher Gold from the UK, uh, Jupiter Asset Management. Uh, and then Lowell Resources Fund from Australia. Um, I won't spend much on this particular slide, but this uh, just refers a little bit more detail to those Jork resources. Um, our goal this year is to increase the size of Zackley, as that's geometrically a far simpler proposition than Caribou Dome, uh, but also to then you know, shift our focus onto some of the porphyry targets. Why do, why do we think there are porphyry targets here? Well, if we stand right out at the regional scale, you see the diagram here on the left shows a compilation of the magnetic data for the whole of Alaska processed to uh, mimic gravity. Our project lies right on a major terrain boundary between the Tintina Gold Belt to the north and the major Cretaceous Porphyry Copper Belt to the south. That Porphyry Copper Belt hosts such deposits as Pebble, which is about 11 billion tonnes at uh, 0.3 something copper and 0.2 something gold. Uh, one of the world's largest undeveloped copper gold projects. Uh, it also hosts a number of other um, Cretaceous Age porphyry copper deposits, both in southeast Alaska and British Columbia and the Yukon. And then what we've also noticed in this data uh, is there is a very strong um, northwest trending fault which cross cuts the entire uh, Cretaceous porphyry belt uh, and intersects the terrain boundary right in the area of our project. If we just zoom in now and look at the project scale geology, you can see here major uh, northeast trending thrust faults. That is the boundary between the Tintina Gold Belt to the north and the Porphyry Coppers to the south. Uh, and then you can see uh, a series of northwest trending faults, and they mark the, the local manifestation of that major regional fault. Uh, and effectively, at that intersection, um, and as seen in uh, aeromagnetic data, we've interpreted a number of major um, intrusive centres. Um, and we have the, uh, the Zackley scarn itself sitting right in the middle of that cluster. Zooming in a little bit, you can see the uh, magnetic data there on the, the right-hand side. Uh, we have a number of uh, very encouraging magnetic anomalies there that are characterised by a magnetic core with a surrounding zone of magnetite destruction. And this is your classic sort of textbook, you know, porphyry intrusive style of magnetic anomaly where you have a, a central core of, of hot... Um, intrusion that is magnetite stable and that brings in the copper and the gold and then as the fluids escape from that and react with the surrounding host rock you get magnetite destruction. So it's a very typical pattern that you see. 
when we then superimpose, uh, as we've done on the left-hand side in this diagram, the regional copper geochemistry, you see that a number of those intrusive centres are coincident with copper, and in some cases, copper, gold, moly, arsenic, and silver anomalism. Particularly the Mars anomaly there, which has uh, all of those elements um, at particularly high numbers. Uh, there's actually southeast target there. Uh, the only reason that doesn't have uh, anomalism on it is it's undercover, so that's a, a blind position. Exactly itself, um, the slide on the right-hand side there, sort of the, the diagram, um, that is a, a drilling program that we are about to commence. You can see what I'm showing there is the copper resource block model. The white traces are drill holes that we um, intend to drill this summer. Uh, drill rigs are mobilising next week, and we should start drilling by the middle of June. You can see on the left-hand side there uh, a, a cross-section through the deposit showing that it's relatively simple. It's a, it's a scarn deposit with the limestone on the south side uh, up against a, uh, an older diorite, an early phase of low-grade copper and iron mineralisation in the scarn, and then a later overprinting, much higher-grade copper gold uh, mineralisation event where the copper is predominantly in the form of bornite and cobalite. The gold is generally free milling. We'll be able to get that out on a gravity circuit. The copper, as I said, in borna and covalite is in very high tenor sulphides, so we expect when we do our metallurgical test work that we will end up with a very high grade concentrate, but that is uh, subject to, to work uh, to determine that. So drilling program, as I said, about to commence in, uh, in approximately 10 days. Uh, an initial program of 5,000 metres. Um, our goal is to increase the size of the Zachley resource um, to, yeah, our, our aim is to double the size of the resource this season. Um, and still have line of sight to perhaps doubling it again with further drilling. Um, just sort of stepping out a little bit now, you can see exactly there, the mineralisation itself has a strong west-northwest structural grain to it. Uh, it is on uh, one of these major west-northwest trending fault systems, and that fault links the exactly southeast porphyry target and the Mars porphyry target. Mars is the only other part of this system that's had any geophysics done on it. Um, and with the exception of Zachley, there has been absolutely no drilling anywhere else on this part of the property. So our goal, as I said, drilling at Zachley this year, um, we want to do some further uh, grain geophysics at both Mars and Zachley southeast, and then drill those um, during the uh, August-September period. Just zooming in a little bit on Mars, and just to give you an idea of why we're excited about it, uh, there's a, a, a peak soil anomaly there, which is about two kilometres long and one kilometre wide. Uh, up to 7.5% copper in rock chip samples at surface and up to 2 grams gold in middle veins and breccia zones. Uh, no outcropping diorites or anything. There's a lot of talus here, a uh, very sporadic outcrop. Um, but the limited IP that was undertaken last year, three lines of IP, one cross line, IP anomaly in all of those, uh, about 150 metres below surface. Um, and as I said before, absolutely no drilling into this prospect at all. So this is one... Uh, that we've got high on our priority list for, for drilling this year. Um, in terms of access, relatively easy access, this is about a six-hour drive from Anchorage with 20 kilometres north of the Denali Highway. So we have the potential for all-year road access. We are uh, 100 kilometres to the east of the major north-south highway, rail and power corridor that links Fairbanks with Anchorage, and that gives us access to rail, uh, which in turn gives us access to all year round ports in Anchorage and Seaward. So we can, if we get to that point, uh, export concentrates uh, with relative logistics ease. So just to summarise, it's, it's, a, it's a large project, 240 square kilometres. Uh, state mining claims were in uh, the mining friendly state of Alaska. Uh, advanced projects, the, you know, the early exploration risk has been removed here. We've made discoveries, we have jork resources. Um, and we have massive upside from those porphyry targets. Um, so I'll, I'll leave it there. Uh, please feel free to drop into our booth, number 21, for further information. Thank you very much.